We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? All right, Jared. How are you doing today? Oh, uh, you know, just uh, we're we're Kyle. We're in like full blown silly season in the college football world right now. For a short uh, period of time. Yeah. Uh, the the transfer portal is is turning people away at the gates. Not literally. They're, they're everyone. Everyone's still clamoring in um it's a it's a mess there's a lot more people going to the portal than are, than are uh i think gonna find homes on the other end um austin says some kids are going to get screwed by the portal yeah absolutely um, they are yeah and like that's they're they're in the unfortunate position of being in the unfortunate position of being guinea pigs in all of this What's I think very interesting is we've seen an uptick of like really good players who are just trying to like upgrade schools. We, you know, we've seen a lot of really good player can't quite get on the field, especially at quarterback goes somewhere else and, and plays. And Texas A&M is going to capitalize somehow. I, I don't see how that's possible. Uh, they're, losing guys to the portal left and right young guys old guys all sorts of guys but yeah the uh what, what's interesting is the number of players that we are seeing who are leaving because the coach left who are leaving because they feel like they can upgrade by you know going somewhere quote unquote better and there's i think there's i don't have numbers to back this up but i think there's a decent uptick of of that happening right now mm-hmm yeah, which is going to mean a lot less homes for those guys who weren't starting where they came from. But the more players enter the portal, I suppose, the more players who can come back out of the portal. Uh, so I don't know if it uh, if it's self-sustaining or not. I feel like a dumb, decent number of these kids are going to end up in the FCS. But here we are. So whatever, whatever happened to the rule? OK, about one time transfers. That's still a thing. Really? Yeah. How how are how are players able to transfer multiple times then? Grad transfer is still a thing. So you can like just tra you get your one free one. And then then you can go do like then you can still do a grad uh graduate waiver. Um, and as Austin points out in his sarcastic quotation marks, there are other waivers you can get. But that's a different conversation for a different day. Kyle, with all these players in the portal and with Ohio State maybe having um, upcoming deficiencies next year, I think it's worth taking a look at the portal um, and, and seeing who's out there that might pique the interest of Ohio State. And of course, like new players are entering the portal every day. Uh, and we're recording this on on December 7th, Wednesday night. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll see uh, how how true this list stays. I'm sure there will still be more players entering the portal. Is Ohio State behind the curve with NIL? Ohio State is no. The answer is no. Sort of. Um, Ohio State's doing things legally, which does put them behind the curve of teams that aren't doing it legally. But as far as, you know, of the teams who are doing it legally, they're, you know, right there with everybody. Stop being quote unquote legal day. It's hard to, t again, because we're in the Wild West, we don't really know what all this transfer portal stuff looks like long term. And we don't know what all the NIL stuff looks like long term. And we also just don't know how the NCAA or if the NCAA is going to enforce the rules on the book. We just don't know. NCAA is dying. <laughs> it can't manage football anymore. Fo football became too big for the NCAA. The conferences are going to have to break out and, and do this on their own. Yeah. And that'll be really easy when there's only there's, two there's, conferences, the North and the South. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's definitely some 
under the table stuff going on here. Uh, cause yeah. it's, it's kind of, kind of interesting. I mean, you can, you can input whatever, whatever word you want to put in there. I believe the you, word is you tampering. See, you see, you see a, you see a player, um, enter the, the, um, the portal. transfer portal. And then all of a sudden it's, oh, hey, yeah, they, um, uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to make their decision that day yeah. to a school already. Yeah. Amazing how that works. There is yeah. definitely no tampering happening there, which nope. no tampering, does. No violations. None well, of that, right? Uh, well, well, we'll see. Again, like tennis sampering. Yeah. Some Texas A S ampering. Uh, it's more of the it's more of the ATM. Uh the uh the Aggie Texas money. Ah, yes, yes. Solid pronunciation. Well, I'm about to go through recruits, so that'll be my last solid pronunciation of the show. But Kyle, let's uh Let's start naming names, um, some targets for Ohio State in the transfer portal. Um, where would you like to start? Start with some familiar names here. Uh, Deshaun McCullough. Yeah. Uh, one time Ohio State commit, committed to Indiana, and is finding a new home. But it's looking like a pretty sure thing that uh, he's he's heading on over to Oklahoma. Sure-ish. Short-ish. 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 Um, Oklahoma's getting a bit of a nod right now because that looks like where his younger brother, um, who is currently a, a 2023, I think, recruit, um, if not 2024, uh, seems to be a solid lean to Oklahoma. So it's looking like the son is also looking at Oklahoma, but not a done deal yet. But if you... You think we can flip them both, Zach asks. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I've not heard anything about the younger brother, honestly. Like, it's just, he's not been on the Ohio State radar, and I don't have a solid explanation for you as to why that is, because I just don't know. Um, I only follow recruiting to the point of who are Ohio State's targets, you know what I mean? If they're not on Ohio State's radar, I, I just don't know much about them. Um, Dylan Johnson, apparently, I, I'm just going to assume, Esquire, that he entered the, he entered the portal. Is that what's happening yeah. in that post? Yep, he just did. He shredded Leech. Oh, that's Mississippi State. Yes, that is. I, I saw a transfer portal message and someone in maroon and just assumed it was texas a&m because that's how things are going right now since leech is glad i'm leaving yikes and by the way this is the dark side of the portal everyone's like oh all these kids are going into the portal and they might not find a home they're making a huge mistake a lot of those kids are being pushed into the portal let's be honest we used to complain all the time about the SEC and oversigning. Well, guess what? Everyone oversigns now. The portal has just made that very easy. Yeah. And and above board. All right. Uh, but yeah, yeah Deshaun, Deshaun McCullough so, potentially going to Oklahoma. That's where I would place him right now. Um, but for not a sure thing by any means. Yep. Yeah. All right. The, the other name here, uh, Mason Cobb, uh, Oklahoma State. One of if I can talk, one of Oklahoma State's best linebackers. Uh, obvious ties with Coach Knowles here. You would think that the Buckeyes definitely take a, a couple of looks. Uh, his yeah, I can't I can't talk, Jared. It's all right. <laughs> Have look 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 towards him to maybe join Ohio State. Yeah, and we don't know who's coming back and who's not coming back. This is kind of the disadvantage of making the playoffs. Um, you know, a lot of players are declaring for the NFL right now. Um, JSN just declared for the NFL. That's largely based off of health issues. He wasn't gonna be able to play in the playoff anyway. So that's a different situation. Um, but you don't necessarily know like what steel chambers is going to do. 
and you don't necessarily know what Tommy Eichenberg is going to do. Um, now, hopefully the guys behind the scenes, the coaches behind the scenes know, but sometimes the players don't even put like rock solid thought into it until after the season's over. Uh, but you're looking at a potential situation where Ohio State loses their two starting linebackers. Um, and Mason Cobb is obviously incredibly familiar with the defense and incredibly successful at Oklahoma State. So it's it's very easy to tie him to Ohio State at this time. Yep. All right. Uh, name that, if you've been listening to us for for a few years here, name that you've probably heard us uh, pronounce and um, actually pronounce it right for a change here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to me, say Adelier, um, a once commit, a once Ohio State commit, uh, joined Texas A&M and has now found his way to the portal. Like, isn't it Adel EA? I think that's what he said. Like, Adelier, yeah, that's what he said. And if it's not what he said, it was close enough. <laughs> but yes, it's Adelier. Yeah, one time Ohio State commit there. There is, I, I've seen talks about him going to TCU. I've seen talks about him. Uh, there, there's, there's talk out there. I don't know how much of it to believe, how much of it not to believe, but Ohio State was in on this commitment until uh, very late. So you have to assume, and by the way, this, this commitment, by the way, we're less than a year out from his national signing day. It wasn't that long ago. You'd have to think, you'd like to think that there's still an uh, open line of communication there. Um, so we'll we'll see. Um, I, I don't know, and a lot of that depends upon, because we'll talk about recruiting in the second half of this show, uh, maybe how some of the, the chips fall as far as the recruits go and how much Ohio State uh, and how much Adelia have mutual interest. All right, some some other names here. Uh, corner uh, JQ Hardaway. Uh, yep, was over at Cincinnati. Uh, recruited by Cincinnati, but now Ohio State coach Perry El- by coach Perry Elano. Yeah. Uh, again, Ohio State needs cornerback help. Um, I they need cornerback help now. Um, they're not going to get it now, but. They need both depth and a, hopefully a starter out of uh, out of this transfer portal. I, I think this is a real cause of concern for Ohio State. Um, again, both from a numbers and a talent standpoint. Give me that Texas A&M U guy. Well, we'll get there. Um, but yeah, as, as Kyle pointed out, Hardaway was recruited to Cincinnati by Perry Eliano, who is obviously now at Ohio State. So, again, very easy to to draw connections there. Yep. Uh, heavily recruited by Ohio State uh, quarterback Graham Mertz. I think I think he could be um, the next uh, Penix. Could be uh, ha- didn't have really such good didn't have such good success at his at his original school, but I think. But in the right scenario, I think Mertz could be an excellent quarterback. Also, sometimes guys just get ruined by coaches, if we're being honest. Um, I, I don't know. And I, I, I include him here because Ohio State was in on this recruitment so late. Um, I think the problem you run into with Graham Mertz is he's probably too good to accept a transfer where he doesn't have... A realistic shot, quite frankly, of getting the starting job. But he's also not good enough that he's going to find a home where someone's going to offer him a starting job unless he goes like down to the Mac or something like that. Right. So I think he's sim- he's simultaneous. He's not good enough to compete at Ohio State for a starting job while also being too good to, you know, rel- him, rele- relegate himself to the quarterback who comes in for the sake of depth. All right. Welcome, uh, Kabuto. Some other name, yep. Some other names here. Got a pair of offensive linemen from Stanford. Uh, uh, Drake uh, Nugent. 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 Wow. 
Wow. Why am I pronouncing it that way? Uh, <laughs> and offensive tackle, Miles Hitton. Yeah, uh, uh, both almost. of the one G, one G, one G. Um, both of these guys, two-year starters, lots of experience, lots of talent under their belt. Ohio State needs help along the offensive line. Yep. Another one that they, another one that they could look at is an Alabama transfer, uh, Javion Cohen as well. Another two-year starter that maybe look his way. Yeah, um, and like that's an entire side of the line right there. That's a center mm-hmm. in Nugent, uh, a tackle in Hilton, and a guard in Cohen. Um, or you can look at the the tackle from Alabama too, uh, Tommy uh, Brockenmeyer as well. Um, Tommy Brockenmeyer. Why do I? I feel like he's already. Did he already commit? Anyone named oh, Tommy is. Uh, I he's he's tied. He's tied to, I know he's already been tied to Texas pretty strongly. Uh, so that one might already be over. Um, I look. Cohen apparently bad this year from what I've heard. You know, you don't necessarily Not bring. Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, doesn't he have a brother? Question mark twin. Question mark. Um, who, who are you talking about? Brockermeyer. Um, but yeah, the, with as far as Brockermeyer goes, there's uh, I, I think so. Yeah, I think he has a twin on the team. I believe you're correct. Yes. Um, the yeah, just again, like back back to Austin saying, oh, but was that guy good this year? Hey, sometimes you bring in a guy for depth. You don't always bring in a guy. You know, look at Naote Ote. I don't think anyone thought that Naote Ote was going to immediately start at Ohio State. It's not to say he didn't bring value to the team. Um, not all of these guys are going to be like walk on starters, not going to be day one starters. They're going to compete for jobs and sometimes they'll be depth players. Um, I tell you who would start immediately. Um, from the University of Virginia, Fentrell Cypress. Um, widely considered one of the best cornerbacks in the ACC. We actually know for a fact that there has been communication uh, between Cypress and Ohio State. Uh, I think there have been some, whether they be crystal balls or whatever it is they're doing over it on three um, RPMs, I think they call them. Um, already placed for Ohio State to pick up Fentrell Cypress uh, through the transfer portal. And that would be enormous. That would be great. Um, I would say the quote unquote downside here compared to maybe some of the other corners we might talk about today, he does have one year of eligibility left. Mm-hmm. I'd prefer they have the time grace to develop properly as college football players first. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. From the, from the candle shop, Kabuto. Um, yeah, it's sometimes it's also the fault of the coaches and sometimes it's the fault of the players. Uh, sometimes players get a little too impatient or a little to whatever, but also sometimes coaches are too quick to blame the players when they aren't developing as opposed to the coaches when the players aren't developing. Um, and it's just a case by case basis. Yep. All right. I'm going to list some corners here as well then Jared for the next ones. Uh, so some of you've probably heard of before, uh, some Ohio state's gone after, um, so, uh, Control uh, Cypress from Virginia. We have Denver Harris from Texas A&M and as well as Tony Grimes. Yeah. From UNC. Tony Grimes would be a huge pickup if that's possible. Uh, Ohio State was involved in that recruitment. Um, obviously, it didn't work out in the end. They were also involved in the Denver Harris recruitment. That didn't work out in the end. Um it is worth pointing out with Denver Harris, who again is from Texas A&M, uh, was suspended for most of the latter half of the season, 
um, there are potential character discipline legal uh, you know I, I don't know uh, issues at play here so if, if we're talking pure skill you, mm -hmm. I, and the fact that he actually has a lot of eligibility left you'd almost want him over Cyprus but again there's character issues here so I think I still think Cyprus is probably the number one target for Ohio State as far as corners go um, and as far as all that goes, Texas A&M, legal issues, character issues, um, suspended along with Denver Harris was P.J. Williams, an offensive tackle from Texas A&M. Um, Ohio State was not involved in his recruitment that closely. I kind of feel like if these two were, you know, running together and got each other in trouble, you'd probably only want one of the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to split them up, right? Um, but yeah, there, there, he, there was an actual like a marijuana related arrest here, and it, I, I believe if I'm remembering correctly, and I could be wrong, so patience with me if I'm re remembering this incorrectly. Um, oof, weed laws, Kabuto, I'm with you. But apparently he had enough to potentially qualify him under like, I mean, I mean, I mean, laws are laws. You got, you got to know what in your state, what the laws are and you got to be careful what you're carrying in, carrying in your car and how fast you're going down the road. And if yeah. you get caught with such, such, um, with 69 bullets, such law, such laws that will get you in trouble. Uh, you, you got to be aware of that. Right. But what I'm trying to say is, is that he had like, and uh, we, we don't have Esquire in the chat anymore. Um, what, what, what you might call like intent to distribute amounts of weed. It, it, we, we weren't talking about, uh, we weren't talking about a, a, a small baggie of personal usage weed here. Again, at least that's what was being uh, reported. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, small bags of weed, uh, small amounts of ammunition, whatever the case may be. So, I mean, you, you gotta be, you gotta, you have to be yeah, aware. Yeah. 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 I know Kyle, everyone knows what you're talking about. All right. All right. Uh, just, I'm going to rattle off some more quick names, um, that a lot of these guys I would call either outside, uh, possession with intent to distribute 10 pounds or less of marijuana is a felony punishable by a minimum of one and maximum of 10 years imprisonment possession over 10. Yeah. Um, I, I feel, I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was something like the actual police report said something like between four ounces and a pound or four ounces and 10 pounds. I, I, I don't remember, but it was like, again, it wasn't like a, that isn't shit. Yes, it is. <laughs> Again, if we were talking like a couple joints in his pocket that he was, you know, like, let kids be kids and all that. But like, yeah, anyway, anyway, uh, uh, I'm going to rattle off some names again. These guys you probably attribute to as, as depth players, or maybe I've just included them on this secondary list because I really don't think Ohio State maybe there's not interest there for one reason or another, but these, these guys, I'm just gonna call these guys like long shots. Right. And there are already some long shots in that first list. So extra long shots, um, cornerback from Oklahoma, Joshua Eaton, cornerback from Virginia tech, DJ Harvey, cornerback from Duke, Tony Davis, um, cornerback from Alabama, Kyrie Jackson, cornerback, a lot of corners, I was studying the corners. Uh, Brian George from Texas A&M. Cornerback Fred Davis from Clemson. Fred Davis, uh, very talented. Uh, again, potential character issues there. Uh, cornerback Keon Markham uh, from Arizona State. His twin brother, Keyjohn Markham, who's a safety from Arizona State. 
Uh, from Nebraska, Jaden Gould. From Boston College, an offensive tackle, Kevin Pine. Um, and I'm going to give you five linebackers, and then we can move on to traditional recruiting as opposed to as opposed to transfer portal recruiting. Um, Rob Rod Dilworth from North Carolina, Sergio Allen from Clemson, Julian Simon from USC, um, Lavani. De Mooney? Uh, you know, Kyle, I went through a bunch of names. I feel like that's the first one I really kind of fucked up. So I'm, I'm going to give myself a small victory here. Uh, from Stanford and Ernest Hausman uh, from Nebraska. All right. Awesome. All right, anything else before we go into the, um, to the recruiting, to the recruiting class here? Um, if anyone wants to ask any questions, we can we can jump back to the transfer portal stuff. Um, Kyle, did we check? Ask Sloopcast. Were there any recruiting questions in there? Uh, um, you answered mine, says Zach. Cool. I'm I'm glad uh, I'm which, I'm glad which I position helped. groups should the Buckeyes be aggressively trying to fill with the portal? Um. I yeah I I, I think I suggest linebackers, running backs, corners, and offensive linemen. Um, running backs again. That might depend upon how things play out in recruiting, and as you're gonna find out, not great. Um, corners, linebackers, and offensive linemen. Um, w would be my focus areas for sure. Uh, that's just where they've not hit from a recruiting standpoint. Um, and they, they, I feel like they've turned the corner on the linebacker recruiting, but I don't know if they turned that corner long ago, long ago enough, uh, to, to help for the 2023 season. They still might be a bit young at linebacker, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle, let's let's talk about the, again, actual recruiting class, not portal recruiting, actual recruiting. Um, Kyle, currently in the class, I'm going to we're going to do another big name list off 19 members currently in the class. Wide receiver Brandon Ennis, wide receiver Noah Rogers, offensive tackle Luke Montgomery, defensive tackle Jason Moore, wide receiver Carnell Tate, cornerback Calvin Simpson, Hunt, tight end. Jel uh Jelay uh Kyle. Do you guys know this one? I don't know this one. Jelani. Uh, Jelani? We're gonna go Jelani. Jelani Thurman. I'm gonna stop on Jelani Thurman. Um there has been some flirting with Auburn here. I'm honestly like 60-40 in favor of Ohio State here. M maybe 70-30. Um not a hundred percent sure. Obviously I'm 70% sure um, that he ends up at Ohio state. Oh, there's another Auburn one coming up, Zach. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, safety Malik Hartford guard, Joshua Padilla, uh, cornerback, uh, K and Lee. Uh, and I'm going to stop once again. Uh, potential Auburn flip watch on Lee. I feel I feel much better here though. I, I I feel like he's doing his due diligence. He's kicking tires. Um, I but I I feel, you know, this is this is like eighty five fifteen. I I feel good on 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 Lee eventually ending up in or he's already in the class, but that he's not going to end up leaving the class. Uh, ask Sloopcast, who was the most successful transfer after he left Ohio State? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's Joe Burrow. Now, is there a non-Joe Burrow <laughs> answer to that question? Um, yeah, last year at Alabama, Williams. Yeah, I can't think of any on. Yeah, Jamo. I can't think of any on the defense side off the top of my head. Yeah, I you, I was already going there, Kabuto. Uh, I can't think of a defensive one off the top. Of, oh, um, 
It's different, though, with Noah Spence. Because mm-hmm. he... I think that was pre-Portal, and there were other issues taking place there. There were. Yes. Uh, but Noah Spence went down to the Mac, had a great career, and still ended up in the NFL. But again, that that might not be like a a good comparison because of their, you know, other issues taking place there. All right. Back to the list. Linebacker Avril Reese. Um dude at USC. I forgot his name. I'm not tracking. I don't remember. Um Jermaine Matthews once again defensive back. Oh. Yeah. It, 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 look at USC's defense this year and, and ask me again. Um, Jermaine Matthews, uh, again on flip watch, this time to Miami. Um, I still feel good here. Look at these guys abandoning the show to answer my dumb question 10 out of 10. Hey, Kabuto, uh, you're, you're a paying patron. You, uh, it's what you get for your money, man. <laughs> it's what you get for your money. Um, but yeah, Jermaine Matthews, again, I feel good here. I don't feel great here. Like We could probably call this one like 70-30 as well. Uh, guard, Austin Saraveld. Uh, safety, Jaden Bonsu. Defensive tackle, Will Smith. Wide receiver, Bryson Rogers. Safety, Cedric Hotkins. Defensive tackle, Caden McDonald. Offensive tackle, uh, Miles Walker. Did I say Caden McDonald was a defensive tackle or did I just say he was a tackle? I, I suddenly. Okay. He's a defensive tackle. Uh, Ohio state recently lost a running back uh, to a decommitment, uh, which has left them scrambling a bit at running back. And I don't feel great <laughs> about where that might end up. Um, They're trying to get Ruben Owens as we sort of, start looking at the prospects. They were trying to get Ruben Owens to visit. And it looks like that. It looked like that wasn't going to happen. Uh, but then a new hope shows up. Uh, the Louisville coach, which is where Ruben Owens was committed. If I didn't already say that, uh, accepted the job at Cincinnati, Scott Sutterfield, uh, leaving Louisville for Cincinnati. Okay. Well, okay. Maybe we can get him. Maybe we can get him on campus now. Maybe we can get him to visit. And then, Kyle, just a few hours before we started recording this, he decommitted. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. Game on. Best running back in the country. Game on. Let's see what we can do here. Um, and then, like, the crystal balls and the RPMs and everything just started flying in for Texas A&M. Um, yeah. Yeah. Those oil barons haven't learned their lesson. After watching, like, I don't know, a third of last year's amazing record-setting recruiting class enter the transfer portal, you can't buy loyalty. You simply can't buy loyalty. Uh, So we'll see how that plays out. Maybe maybe it'll work out for Ruben Owens. Uh, They are hmm, not not doing too well. They're, they're, They're ranked 24th right now. In the 2023 class. Unless you're the Yankees, apparently. Well, that's not loyalty. That's employment. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's different. Um, You can't buy deep loyalty, but you can buy enough to win football. Apparently not. Apparently not, Kabuto. That's a joke about today, Jared, but you don't baseball. No, I don't baseball. If that was if that was a specific reference to the happenings recently in baseball, uh, you are correct. I am I'm fucking clueless. Uh, looking elsewhere at running backs, um Jamarin Wilcox um once seemed like a solid Kentucky lead, but he has received a uh a late offer from Ohio State. So we'll see. Um, we'll see. Uh, I've heard both positive and negative things as far as the outlook here. Um, 
I don't feel great about it. I already said I don't feel great about Ohio State's running back prospects in this class. So much pessimism. Is it? I feel like I shot down almost all of the trans the uh the the flip rumors. I, I, the worst in the flip rumors I gave was 70-30. I don't feel like that's pessimistic. Um specifically in regards to the running backs, yeah, I'm, I'm pessimistic there. If we're talking specifically the running backs, yes. Um Justice Hayes, uh currently a Bama commit. What makes this interesting is he's a top 5 commit. But Bama has two of those right now in the running back room. So a lot of people are looking at Justice Hayes and being like, hey, you sure you want to go be second banana at Alabama? Is that a thing you want to do? And he's been listening and he's been flirting around. Unfortunately, if he leaves Bama, I think it's a lot more likely he ends up in Georgia than it than it is that he ends up at Ohio State. I think Ohio State is not out of it. Uh, I'll probably place Ohio State's chances here at less than 10%. Second banana is so gross. Is that is there deeper meaning there that I'm not aware of? Is that is that a sexual thing? Have I gone my entire life without realizing that? I hope not. Kyle, uh, who do you want to talk about next? Uh, let us talk about... Uh... Joshua Mickens, uh, decommitted from LSU. Uh, feels like a done deal um, with him and Ohio State. Yeah, um, a lot of people worried about Ohio State. Um, Ohio State is has shot uh, for the moon on defensive ends this year. They do every year, it feels like. Um, yep. But when you shoot for the moon, you go up against the other top programs in the country, and that makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, they have won this one. Um, they, they, they got, they got Mickens to decommit from LSU. Um, this is if, or excuse me, this is when, not if, when, not if, all right. Is everyone stopped chatting on purpose just to leave the banana on the screen? Is this what's happening right now? Yep. <laughs> okay. Yes. Austin well, confirms well, Austin that that's, it. that that isn't, no, he hasn't because it's only a, a single line of text. Y'all conspire against us, I swear to God. Um, so yeah, Mickens feels like a a, a bit of a done deal. Yeah, uh, probably a re probably a reach here for Ohio State. Uh, is uh, Keon Keeley uh, seems to be more of a Bama lead right now. Yeah, I don't know if I would call it like. A, is 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 the bot down? I don't know if I call it a reach at this point. Um, although I would definitely say that Bama is leading. Up, oh, nope. Just, just the bot's a little slow. Bot's a little slow. Um, Bama's leading, um, but I, I don't feel like it, it's not a, it's not a terrible reach though. Um, I, I'm gonna put this one at like sixty forty Bama, sixty forty in favor of Bama. Bama. Um, I think Ohio State's done a great job getting in on this conversation. Ever since he decommitted from Notre Dame, everyone had him going to Bama like right away, just straight away, right to Bama. And Ohio State has have made themselves a legit contender in this conversation. Um, but I don't think it'll be enough, but I'm also not willing to give up on it. All right, um, some running backs here, Jared. Uh, we, Marion Wilcox, Ruben Owens. We 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 talked about those, Kyle. We talked about him already, and Justin Haynes. Yeah, we talked about them already. Um, if we stick to the uh defensive ends, um, Damon Wilson is a guy who a lot of recent buzz has placed him at Georgia. He has announced the commitment date. He has um, said in interviews that he has already made up his mind. He knows where he's going. Um, and ever since then, people have been sort of placing him to Georgia. But I'm not sold. Um, 
a lot of crystal balls still have him going to Ohio State. Um, both teams, and I, I, I'm almost certain both head coaches, um, have an in-home scheduled with him. Wilson has stated that it is down strictly to Ohio State versus Bama. He has stated that he's also, like I said, he also stated that he's made up his mind, but he hasn't stated who, and apparently he's not telling the coaching staffs, and apparently both coaching staffs feel confident at this point. I'm giving Ohio State a very slight edge here. Um, no, Kabuto, I'm not going to say it's a lock. What on earth is happening in that picture? I'm not saying it's a lock by any means, although I'm still leaning Ohio State. Right. Probably the big one that everybody's been talking about. Probably the big, big name that we've talked about or heard people talking about the past few weeks here leading up to the Ohio State Michigan game and after 50 Caleb Downs. Yeah. Um, he's already committed to Alabama. He's been committed to Bama for, for a little while now. Um, I hear that the visit during the Michigan game went great. Um, you know, it's one of those, they checked all the boxes. They did everything they could. Um, I'm still leaning Bama on this. Absolutely still leaning Alabama on this. Don't get me wrong. Um, but Ohio State still has a real shot here. Uh, I'm going to call it like 66-33. I'll call this one like 66-33 in favor of Bama. Um, before we get too far away from it, uh, we do still have another defensive end to talk about. Mateo Uyunglele, um, seemingly down to Ohio State and USC, although don't completely count out. Party out back, going to the checkout. <laughs> okay. Um, Uyunglele is, uh... Also, he's been playing this entire recruitment pretty close to his chest, so it's it's hard to say for sure. I give Ohio State and USC like equal shots here, and I give like Oregon an outside shot. Call it like 45, 45, and 10. Jared can do math. Eh, sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> I can do math. Uh, anyone else, Kyle? I think, I think that's really about, um, oh, cu a couple more here. Uh, we got quarterback Lincoln, um, Keen Holtz, who's a current, um, I believe it's kind Wisconsin commit. Kind of also have tight end, uh, Michael Smith. Yeah. Um, Mickens, we already talked about Mickens, Zach. Uh, he, the LSU decommit. Um, yeah, Lincoln, Ky I'm gonna go Kineholtz. I don't, I don't, but you might be right. Um, currently committed to Washington quarterback. Um, Ohio State feels confident. It's not a done deal. It's not like with, with Mickens, I said that I feel like it's just when, not if, uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't put, uh, Kineholtz in when not if territory, but I think I feel pretty good about it. You know, call it like a 80, 20 in favor of Ohio state here. And Kyle also mentioned Michael Smith. Uh, Michael Smith is a tight end and he has recently chopped his list down to Ohio state, South Carolina and Arkansas. And I'm just going to be real with you. I, I don't know. I don't know how to divide that up. I, I, I don't know. Um, so I guess we could just call it like 33s all around because I'm, I'm just honestly not sure. Might give Ohio State a very slight edge here. Give so them 34, a... So 34, 33, 33? Yeah, let's let's do that, Kyle. Thank you. That's a <laughs> that, That's a good math assist right there. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Um, All right. I, so I think, think I think, a, yeah, I think that's about it here. A lot of names. It's a lot of names that um, uh, Jared and I just talked about here. But uh, yeah, be curious on how how the whole 
transfer portal is going to play out here. I'm sure as we're talking, much more has happened in the portal. <laughs> and um, and obviously that's going to affect the 23 recruiting class as well. Yeah, back to the portal real quick. And I'm going to ask Kyle this. And I also, uh, anyone in the chat who wants to answer this, please go ahead as well. Um, of all the guys currently in the portal, who 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 would you want Ohio State to get more than anyone else? Who's who would be like if you're Ryan Day, who is your number one target guys in the portal? Oh boy. Um who who are you calling? Like you wake up today and you're today's the day that you're gonna call portal guys. Who's first on the list? What's who's the first phone call you're making? I would def- definitely probably want some help with the offensive line. So maybe one of the, maybe you give Cohen a call. Maybe you give one of the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, he's got it there. One of the Stanford guys a call there. Uh, also want to look at the defensive backs. So we've mentioned number of those names. So give, give, any of those a call um probably maybe uh grimes a call first there since you probably have some good relationship with grimes uh, probably cypress as well if if you're wanting to take that chance kyle i asked for one name not 10 oh too bad you're getting 10 uh <laughs> austin says denver um honestly no um if I think there's character issues there. I I would rather have Cypress and Grimes. That that would be my preference in the cornerback space. I would pursue both of them before I'd pursue Denver Harris. Um As far as the offensive line goes, I'd be really interested in talking to um Drake Nugent. Uh that's he, he I mean he was rem, he was on the Remington watch list which is you know best center in the country um i i think he would maybe be, maybe be one of the first phone calls as well yeah uh, you know there's a there's a good history with Nugent's at ohio state i think that's it jared I think that's it unless you want to add anything else no i think we're good um i think this is a good rundown um 19 current commits and then we, what we gave you one two three four five six seven eight nine ten names on top of those 19 um if i have to pick six i'm gonna try and like finish out the class get to 25 um so i'm gonna go damian wilson Uyangalale. Um, Mickens, obviously, uh, Kleinholtz, Kleinholtz, there's no L there, Kleinholtz, Smith, and, ah, fuck it, I'll say Downs, shoot for the moon, give me Caleb Downs. All right. Um, any additional questions from anyone in the chat? Um, if y'all want to ask those, go ahead. I'm going to move into plug stuff territory. Um, want to encourage everyone to check out our merch stores. I'm actually in the process of redesigning a bunch of this stuff in the 7071 store. Um, so if you haven't checked in on that, check in on that. Um, and then check in again, cause I'm not done redesigning it. So uh, that's seven zero seven one dot the sloopcast.com. If you're not familiar with that, um, it's just, a, it's like a bunch of, uh, just Ohio based stuff. It's not, doesn't look like it comes from a podcast. It doesn't look like podcast merch. Um, but if the idea of podcast merch excites you, you can go to merch dot the sloopcast.com. There's a lot of stuff there that is legally, uh, not infringing on Ohio State trademarks, but you know, kind of bumping up next to it. If you know, if you know what I'm talking about, um, you can also uh, support us 
uh, just through donation by going to patreon.thesloopcast.com, you get a bunch of stuff. And I mean a bunch of stuff for $3 a month. A bunch of stuff for $3 a month. You get an ad-free experience on the audio version of the podcast. Uh, you get full access to our Discord server. You get to join Austin and Kabuto and Zach and everyone down in the chat here. You can listen to us live, interact with us live. Um, you get early access to episodes. You even get the bonus extra episode that uh, only gets posted to Patreon. Um, it's a bunch of stuff. I mean, a bunch of stuff for $3 a month. I, I think it's an uh, actually a an amazing deal, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, it's in the, in the deals even better if you just pay for a whole year up front. Uh, cause you get like a 12% or something discount if you do that. And also the discord community is our discord community is, uh, one of the least toxic, uh, repositories of Ohio state fans you can find on the internet. We, 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 we keep things, we keep the, we, we, we manage a tight ship over here. We manage a tight ship over here. So, um, if you're looking for a, uh, incredibly less toxic hangout, uh, for Ohio state fans, come join the discord server. And the discord server, by the way, is free. There are the premium sections, but you know, there's still an Ohio state football board and an Ohio state basketball board and a, uh, national college football board and all sorts of free sections of the discord, uh, that, you know, if you want to try it before you buy it, I guess if you want to come hang out in the discord say, Oh yeah, this actually is everything Jared promised it would be. And then that encourages you to then sign up. Awesome. Kyle, that's all the plugs I feel like doing. I think, I think my throat's getting sore. Do you have any, uh, anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, two quick things here. Uh, Kevin Wilson is going to be moving on uh, yeah. to be head coach over at Tulsa, but will be with the Buckeyes for the duration of the playoffs. And here we are, Jared, in December, and uh, got a black stripe alert here. Yes, yes. Uh, that would be a Mario Bohr, the defensive end. Uh, that we've talked about numerous of times here has his black stripe removed. Yeah. And if you're out there asking why now, why so late? He had a knee injury most of the year. So don't, don't, don't view that as a negative. Like, Oh no. Why is he just now getting it? And that that's why he had, he uh, had sort of an injury hampered year. Um, Zach is asking, is Brian Hartline the new offensive coordinator? I would bet yes. Um, I would say yes. In some capacity, yes. I think it is possible. I believe it is possible that he and Coach Fry are made co-OCs. With Hartline, you know, Hartline's already the quote-unquote passing game coordinator, and Fry is already the quote-unquote running game coordinator. Okay, so now they're just co-OCs. One of them's in charge of the passing stuff. One of them's in charge of the running stuff. And then, let's face facts here, the offensive coordinator is actually Ryan Day. So Ryan Day is the cohesive thing that brings those two guys together, and they form an offense. Uh, I, that is what I suspect happens. Um, so bubble screens are still a thing. Hopefully not. I guess that you, not. you'd have to ask Ryan day. Well, or maybe Brian Hartline. Well, who do we, is. who do we Ruben there Owens? Yep. Yeah. He was supposed to commit about now. Texas A&M. Must be. Yes. Kyle. Yes. Okay. You know, all that blood, I mean, oil money. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I, that's how I think, um, the offensive coordinator will shake out. Um, 
And they have a guy on staff whose name is escaping me. Um, he's already in, uh, highly involved with the tight ends. Um, they'll probably end up promoting him to the staff. If you're wondering who's going to coach tight ends and who's going to be the 11th coach. Um, I, I, his name's totally, I wasn't prepared to talk about this. Um, but they'll probably, uh, hire from within on the tight end front, tight end coach front. Yeah. A couple guys entered the transfer portal from Ohio state. Uh, neither I would call shocking or impactful. Um, Neither guy saw the field much for Ohio State this year. So we move forward. All right. That's it, Jared. That, uh, it. that was last year, Zach. That was last year, not this year. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. Kyle already did Kyle's Corner. Um, the ending music tonight will be brought to you by the Raging Nathans. The Raging Nathans are an Ohio based punk band. Um, so with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is the Raging Nathans.